So what makes a car fun to drive? It seems to be a highly subjective question in the car community. Is it more power, better handling, or more response? The mod we're doing is gonna increase one of those things. I think it really comes down to how a certain car makes you feel. And again, that's very subjective. To me, there's nothing like driving a car all the way to red line down some winding roads. And this mod is gonna help with that. Driving my friend's WRX with its tall gearing and comparing it to the NC MX-5 I also drove made me even more aware of this. Yet his car made more than twice the power of the MX-5. Yet I'd take the MX-5 any day over a WRX. Why? Well, because in the MX-5, I actually had to change gears three times revving out the car to get to 100 kilometers an hour. While in the WRX, to get to 100, I only had to change from first to second and rev second out. So a lot of it comes down to driver engagement and response. We've all heard the saying, it's better to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. And a lot of the Miata's philosophy comes down from that. How can we make the Mazda 3 more engaging then? Or more Miata-like to drive? By using this, a CX-5. Well, maybe not the whole car, but at least part of it. And that part is the transmission. And more specifically, by changing the transmission, we'll be able to change the gear ratio, but more importantly, we'll be able to change the final drive ratio. The final drive ratio is the ratio of how many times the pinion rotates for every rotation of the car wheels. The higher the final drive, the more the pinion rotates per turn per wheel and the more torque and acceleration but a reduced in top speed. So that's what the internet says about final drive and obviously the internet must be right. So changing the final drive on your car is a lot like going into lower gears on your bicycle. The lower the gears, the easier it is to pedal and even if you pedaled hard enough or you put enough torque down you might be able to lift the front end of your bicycle. Similarly, changing the final drive is making the acceleration a lot easier for the engine to pull the car. So the shorter gears make it easier to accelerate and to put more torque to the ground. So if you'd like to learn more about final drives and gear ratios, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can learn more about it. This mod is mostly popular with rear wheel drive cars. Since changing the final drive on a rear wheel drive just requires to changing the rear diff instead of changing the complete transmission. I personally did this mod on my previous Lexus IS250 where I installed a FRS rear differential going from a 3.7 to a 4.1 final drive. And honestly there is a significant difference in acceleration with that car. And that's with only going from a 3.7 to a 4.1 final drive. Some might even refer to this mod as somewhat supercharging your car. In the BMW community, it's often referred as the poor man's supercharger. So back to the CX-5 and the Mazda 3. The stock final drive ratio on the second generation Mazda 3, Sky Active, is a 4.1 while the CX-5 has a final drive ratio of 4.7. So with that much of a significant gap between the 4.1 to 4.7, we should see a significant difference in acceleration and we should also see more torque that's being put to the ground. So now that we looked at the numbers, let's get to work and change both transmissions. I just need a reason. I just need to know what's on your mind Tell me what you're needing You can call my name, I'll be Thank you. 
I'm making some progress with the CX-5 transmission. The transmission is actually loose, the axles are popped out, and uh, the transmission is disconnected from the engine. I did have to go through a couple setbacks, honestly. Uh, one of the ball joint bolts broke, because I was trying to get the knuckle out of the ball joint. So right now it's loose and then I could see that clearly the transmission was not coming out. It wasn't fitting. So I decided to leave that for the day. And when I was looking up online the clutch or transmission job on a Mazda 3, like the same third gen or CX-5, it looks like I have to drop the front subframe to drop the transmission. So I'm going to have to bolt up the transmission back to the engine, bolt it back up on the transmission mount to be able to loosen the whole front subframe and then with the subframe out then I'll be able to drop the transmission so the job ended up being a little bit more than I expected so the other thing I ordered some clutch bearings basically to, to replace it on both cars the Mazda 3 and the CX-5 while I was there because both clutch work well so I didn't really see the need to replace it well because I thought it was going to be a smaller job I didn't think I was gonna have to drop the subframe but um, I got one that is the correct part it's the right part for the transmission and the right and then I got another one and it's just not the right part so reaching out to the company right now to see if they can send another one and see if I can see what we can figure out with that so yeah few setbacks with this transmission job on a side note a quick interesting fun fact is that the uh, throw out bearing or the release bearing for the manual transmission has actually been the same for most manual Mazdas since the 90s which is honestly quite a fun fact or like a pretty funny thing I found online it's the same part number for a 2022 Mazda 3 Sky Active doesn't matter uh, what it is as long as it's manual all the way down to a 1992 Mazda MX-3 so I thought that was pretty interesting uh, it's they use the same release bearing for pretty much all their manual cars so I thought that was pretty interesting <laughs> All right, so I finally dropped the transmission out of the CX-5 and honestly, it's a lot more work than I initially expected. Uh, I didn't think I had to drop the whole subframe to get to the transmission to basically drop it out of the car, but it seems for the third gen Mazda 3 and um, the same platform like the CX-5, uh, you have to drop the, the subframe to get the clearance to drop the transmission. So now I got to move on to the blue Mazda 3. This one is going to be a lot easier because I don't have to drop the subframe that I know because I've done a clutch job on a second gen Sky Active Mazda 3 beforehand. So I know I won't have to drop the subframe, which I'm looking forward to. Um, but basically just jacking up the car and getting the old or new transmission out of the car and then we'll be able to put in the CX-5 transmission.
All right, so I got both transmission taken out of both cars and side by side, they look identical. The biggest difference or the only difference I could really find is that the coating is different, which, which makes sense because they would have different gear ratio. So the CX-5 transmission says CEF7 and a few other different coating, while the Mazda 3 transmission says CAFA with, again, different numbers. Apart from that, they are side by side identical. So while I'm here, I'm going to replace the release bearing for the clutch for installing it in the CX-5 because uh, I haven't got my replacement for the Mazda 3 yet. So we'll see if I get a chance uh, to replace it. If not, the Mazda 3 wasn't that big of a deal to drop the transmission uh, and uh, eventually I'll have to do the clutch too. So for now, let's do that for the CX-5 and then uh, we'll move on to the Mazda 3. <laughs> all right so the transmissions are not the same i was putting back together the cx5 um, after the transmission built it up to the engine no problem everything is fitting there uh, clipping all the clips the sensors everything is fitting uh, like it should i put back the subframe and i'm trying to put the axle back in the transmission and it didn't go in so after trying to figure out play around with it i realized that the cx5 uh, axles are a little bit bigger in diameter than the mazda 3 axles i'm not sure if it's a third generation um, thing maybe if this was a third gen mazda 3 it might have slipped in because the second gen mazda 3 sky active is kind of a mishmash of part from the mzr era with the new sky active engine and transmission so it's a weird part's been special almost from mazda so i'm not sure if having the third gen mazda 3 would have changed anything if the axle would have been bigger uh, or if it's just because the cx5 is a bigger car they just upgraded the axle from the factory so basically what i've done so far i've taken apart the driver's side axle of the cx5 and the mazda 3 i was trying to fit them but the balls inside the mazda 3 and the cx5 for the axle are not the same so there is some slack and some loose with it um, so at this point i'm gonna try to remove the axles completely uh, to see if I, they just uh, slip into the hub. I kind of doubt so, but I'll try that if uh, to see if that works. If not, I think basically I'll have to do get some custom axles uh, to basically get it bolted up to the transmission properly. So that's kind of where I stand right now. I'm also waiting for the clutch bearing uh, release because uh, like I mentioned previously, they only sent one right, the other one was just a random, I don't know what it was. It must have been a clutch bearing for something else. Uh, so I'm waiting to see if I can get that back or if I'm going to have to reorder another clutch bearing to install the transmission in the Mazda 3. I also need to finish up uh, bolting up the subframe and doing a few things around the CX-5 that I still need to do. So still lots of work to do. Uh, I do want to get the axle figured out, so if I need custom axle, at least I can get them sent out uh, to, to get that worked on while I continue the swap uh, in both cars. So I think that's where I'm going to finish this episode right here. Uh, we're kind of uh, 
stand still right now waiting for parts and seeing what's gonna happen so in the meantime if you'd like to go check out this episode right here where i go over how to make a custom short ram intake for completely free and we'll see you guys next time thanks for watching